Hi guys, this is Kev from the Dreamcast Junkyard. Uh, this is not going to be a review, it's just going to be a quick look through this. Let me get that on camera. So this is the Dreamcast Encyclopedia uh, by Chris Scullion. Um, so every game released for the Dreamcast um, includes every Japanese guide and it's the unofficial guide. Just in case any Sega law types are watching. Um, so, disclaimer, it's not a review. I bought this with my own money because I'm a huge fan of Chris's work. Uh, I've got all of his series of these encyclopedias. So what's that? Mega Drive, SNES, NES, N64. Um, we recently had him on the show, so uh, there will be links to that wherever you're watching this. Myself and Mike, we, we sat down and spoke to Chris about this. Uh, so great, it was a great episode, even if I do say so myself. Um, so, yep, you should definitely check that out. So I'm just going to try and cut it. At least you don't have to see my hat then. I've not gone all big YouTube. Let me get rid of my Sega Rally coaster. Yeah, I've not gone all big YouTube wearing a hat. Uh, I've just not washed my hair today. Now, um, if you're familiar, or if you've seen any of Chris's other works, this basically works. Let's start at the start. Like I said, this is not a review, it's just a showcase um, with some links. So you've got your four words, you've got your intros, and it's moving on to it literally just goes through like this, looking at the games. So each each page is laid out, title, where it's available. So I'm gonna try and get rid of this wire here. You have to forgive me, my desk is not set up for this type of show and tell. So territory is available in developer, year, Nice blurb about the uh, about the game. One of the, the pluses um, of this book compared to the others is with a smaller Dreamcast library, RIP Dreamcast, um, you've, got, you've got larger blurbs uh, on pretty much most games. Um, pages come with some screenshots, and then one of the things we talked about with Chris is that, that me and Mike love is this, this fact. So a little fact here for 102 Dalmatians, Puppies to the Rescue, currently retailing for about £20 on CEX, because I spotted that yesterday. Uh, the voice of Domino, Domino, don't know how you're meant to pronounce that, was provided by 15-year-old Frankie Munez, who became a breakout star that same year as the title character in the hit sitcom Malcolm in the Middle. So I did not know that. I hope I pronounced his name. I know who he is now that I've read that. Um, a game that we are fans of here at the Junkyard that we covered on our video game book club. Nice tie in there. 18-wheeler uh, American Pro Trucker. Um, so similar type of thing. Um, so although it's often considered an accompanying piece to Crazy Taxi, 18 wheeler American Pro Tucker was actually developed by a different studio. So tells you a bit about the game. The player can initially choose between four different trucks, each with their own driver, Assault Cowboy, driven by the Stetson wearing Texans, Texas Hawk, Highway Cat, who belongs to Southern Bell Wild Rose, Longhorn, manned by enormous bald chap called Mad Bull and Streamline, driven by the Afro Sporting Moonlight. A fifth truck, a Japanese themed rig called Nippon Maru, I hope I pronounced that right, can be unlocked by clearing arcade mode with all four starting trucks. Never unlocked that. Enjoyed this, but I was not great at it when I played it. Um, uh, fact, the game was ported to the PS2, never heard of it, and GameCube, the one with a handle, um, in 2001 and 2002 respectively, but Sega handled publishing duties over to Acclaim. Pro Dreamcaster claim, they get thumbs up. So, in short, well not in short, if you're, if you're not familiar with these types of books, if you're not familiar with Chris's work, and you're, and you're looking at this, uh, and you're thinking like, why should I get this book for me? And this is very poignant to this weekend. Our internet has been down pretty much all weekend. So when this arrived yesterday, um, I spent a lot of time pouring through it as I did with the other books. I mentioned this on our other show as well, on our show with Chris. For me, this exists as the perfect um, companion to something like um, being a modern Dreamcast fan or a modern collector um, or maybe running some emulation stuff. So sometimes with my... Uh, um, I mentioned you having a Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. I think that's the specific model I've got. Sometimes I get the kind of what I would call browse fatigue or li library drain. I've got so much stuff on that that I don't know what to, to do. So I'll have a look through Chris's books and some other similar books. I'll find a game that catches my eye and I'll load that up. So something you could perfectly do with your, with your Dreamcast GD 
emu, the absolute correct way to pronounce that particular thing. Um, so Crazy Taxi 1, Crazy Taxi 2, laid out glorious pages right here. Um, Crazy Taxi 2 is technically a Dreamcast exclusive at the time of writing, but in 2002 the PSP got Crazy Taxi Fair Wars, which included the cities from the first two games. I, I believe I owned that, but I don't remember that. So the things that we forget in life, eh? Now, now, if you're looking for a specific title, just going to jump to the end. Got our glossary here. Um, I will, I will come to this in a minute. But if you can see this, I don't know because I've got my camera focused. It's split between blue, the correct color for the Dreamcast, and orange. Um, so orange is technically just the Japanese titles, I believe. Um, like I said, I did only get this yesterday. Um, so if you're going through smaller bites. Oh, smaller, smaller blurbs. Still got your fact. Just pointing at Power Jet Racing there. Bit of a gem. Um, pop and music comes with a controller. Um, pop and music four. Did get some votes on the Dreamcast Junkyard Top 200 vote that will hopefully be out soon. Panzer Front recently back on live. So say recently it was within the last two years, isn't it? Decent title for you to check out. So some stuff, some stuff in here, and a great way for you to kind of expand your knowledge uh, and just just get some ideas of what to play. Now I was talking about the glossary because because no video for me would be complete. Oh look at that! It's taking me. Fate has taken us straight to G's. So let us find Giant Killers, page sixty-five. It's like what are you doing? Oh, I'm watching a man on the internet explain to me how a glossary works. That'll be forgotten knowledge soon. Um, page 65. Hopefully this is going to be like a, like a triple, triple page, double page minimum spread to do what? I'll be having words with Chris about this. Um, look at this though. He's used Bradford City. He probably doesn't even realise the significance um, of using... Oh, he must do. He must have researched Giant Killers and fought... Kev Mason, the prominent Giant Killers player. Peter Bigri lays it off to Lawrence. Um, so if you're like, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> You'll be able to find those videos on this channel. Um, so of all the Dreamcast games released exclusively in Europe, Giant Killers is almost certainly the one least likely to appeal to North American players trying to build a complete collection of Western titles. Um, yeah, brilliant. One benefit of a text-based football management game focusing on the country is on one country is storage. The PC version of Giant Killers only needs 32 megabytes of hard drive space to install. Um, it takes up a whole VMU though. I have a VMU to cut to that I could put in here as a prop. Um, but there you are, like I said, obviously it's not a review. Paid for this with my own money very happily. I've already been pouring through it, as I said, but it's just, it's a, a if you're a Dreamcast fan and and I'm going to give you a, a little peep behind the curtain here. We keep these versions of Chris's books, his encyclopedias. Um, we keep these out in the house. They're, they're on the clacks in the living room. Maybe I'll put a shot of that with this one in there, um, in the article that will be up on our blog. But keep them in there because I found that, that I met, and again, I mentioned this on the, the podcast, which I know I've said six or seven times now. I found that people really like... Um, to have this type of layout it's just so so much uh again it's a bit retro itself having a big old book to flick through it's a bit like having a tips guide or something like that um nba showtime on N nba on nbc fantastic title that was in my own top 10 votes huge fan of that um but it's just a really nice way of like reliving checking maybe thinking what you're going to buy if you're new to collecting have a read of the blurbs, see how much those games are. But it's just a, just a, a fantastic addition to the Dreamcast's um, modern day ouvoir. There we go. I'm going to get all media studies teacher on you. So he does mention in his, um, in his, in, I believe it's his, I can't believe it. I can't, not sure if it's Chris's intro or one of the other four words that someone else's first game was ready to rumble, which was my own. Um, first ever Dreamcast title, so so there we are. I'm not I'm not going to spoil it too much. I'm not going to sit here. It's not story time. I'm not going to be reading out 
any more of these, but just let me know if you've bought this, let me know what you think. If you're not aware of this, it's available um, from, um, I've forgotten their name, they're Pen and Sword, I believe they're called. So I did notice in here that they're from Barnsley. My Scorn Nemesis is from Giant Killers. Um, yeah, Pen and Sword books, I've got it here off camera. Um, but so you could order that from directly from them. There it is, missed that on the back. Penandsword.co.uk. Um, so you can get it straight from them or you can get it. Let me cut back to my main camera. You can get it from them. You can get it from other booksellers. You probably know where I'm hinting at. I don't want to be saying their name online. They get they they don't need my marketing. But something for you to just consider. Um, roughly the price of of a decent Dreamcast game. So two copies of Spirit of Speed would cost you this amount um, from CEX at the minute. And what what you're going to do with them? You're never going to play them. Um, so. Something for you to think about. Just a quick short video. Hope you've enjoyed it. We're going to be looking at some of the other some of the other print literature that we have coming out uh, for the Dreamcast at some stage in the future. But just a very quick overview of the Dreamcast Encyclopedia. I'm trying to read this off my screen now. Every game released for the Sega Dreamcast. So thank you very much.